My beginning, it was uh, uh, the art, the visual art. Uh, my father was uh, uh, a painter, uh, and he, he, he had been teaching me painting and restoration of antiques. Uh, but my mother, she, she thought, that I, was, I am speaking in, in about the 50s, and my, my mother thought that the future would have been in the publicity, in the advertising. So she inscribed me in a school of advertising. And it is through the, the publicity that I discovered the modern art. Uh, the modernity that was, uh, uh, for me, a big explosion. Uh, the possibility of being free to make my research, to, 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 make, to find my identity through, uh, through the art. And uh, it is why I started to use uh, to use the mirror. The mirror it was the way to find my identity, uh, to recognize myself. But, and I started with the self-portrait. And the self -portrait, in the self-portrait, normally, you see the, the, the artist alone in, in, the, in the past. And, uh, and finally, I, I arrived to transform the, the canvas in a, in, a real, in a real mirror, and uh, the, the world become part of my, my self-portrait. Because not only me, I was reflected into my painting, but everybody. It is at that moment that I discover that the artist was not alone anymore, and he had the possibility to uh, interfere uh, with the society, to, to act in rapport with, with the others. Because the others came into my paintings. In a certain way, in a certain way, it's, uh, I am speaking about 1961. Uh, uh, in a certain way, I think it was kind of uh, um, precognition of, of uh, uh, what the uh, internet could be, in a certain way, because in, in the mirror, you are, you are you yourself alone in front of the mirror, but in the mirror, there is everybody else. So there is the rapport with, between one and everybody. And everybody that comes in front of the, of the mirror painting, they, they start to be par, part of it. So each one is part of the work, and all together also. Now, after the initial epiphany with the mirror, which you described so beautifully, you have made so many inventions. It's a serial invention. We could talk about all of these serial inventions from the Ojeti Meno to today. But we decided today uh, for DLD to focus on uh, some recent projects. And I wanted to ask you to tell us about this epiphany of Citta dell'Arte. Paolo Naldini is also here. We are very grateful to him, the director of your uh, Citta dell'Arte. And I wanted to ask you what brought you to this idea of inventing the Citta dell'Arte as a kind of a social artistic project, as a social sculpture. But before, before to arrive in Città dell'Arte, I, I made many, many, many actions, many experiences during the 60s and the 70s. Um, I opened my studio to the participation of the others, the participation of the young artists. They could do something, they could come. Uh, with, uh, and many different disciplines uh, came, uh, from music to, to theater to cinema to dance, they came to my studio. And all together we decided to, to go outside. And, and we went in the street. And I create a group that was called the zoo. The zoo, it means to, to escape the cage. <laughs> and also, it means the differences. It means that we, we were different animals that wanted to, to find a way to, <laughs> to, to live together and to act to, together. And it, is why, and it is why the zoo went in the street. And that it was the beginning of my activity of in, uh, my activity of uh, re relation with the others, the relation with the uh, with the, with the other artists, and finally I discover the possibility of making um, an institution. It was not anymore to 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 the moment. I speak about the 90s. It's not the moment to, go, to escape the institution, to go in the street, but to prepare, to organize an institution that was the realization of what we thought it should be. Hmm? And, and, that, and that is Città dell'Arte. Città dell'Arte has, has a double name. It means, it means Cittadella and Città. Cittadella, it means like the fortress of the art, the place for the, the protection 
the protection of the art. At the same time, città, it means the open space, the rapport with the, the multiplicity. So, uh, you know, preservation and action, the two different poles. And, and so on, Città dell'Arte starts, started with, um, with the University of Ideas, with uh, young people that come from all over the, mo the world, and they stay there, and we work all together in the, in the research of uh, how art it can be connected with the so social life. Uh, art and life, art and society. Not only art uh, as, as a, a self, uh, self reference, but as impl implementation and in, in interaction with the social, the, the society. And, and uh, this is Città dell'Arte. Um, but also, uh, we, we, it, it, so it became a, a laboratory. A laboratory, a laboratory with uh, uh, people that are uh, experts of, uh, of science, communication, um, uh, politics, economy. Uh, of course, all that is related, was, it is related with the creativity of the artist. So the artist that is not anymore on, only a, an, an artist uh, um, in the traditional idea of the modernism that is self self-production, it makes a self-production, but it's a production of, in, in, of interaction with, with the others and the society. And there are many, many dimensions to Città dell'Arte. You see some images of the project. There is art, there is education, ecology, economy, policy, spirituality, production, work, architecture, of course, technology. Uh, many of these things are coming together. Yet now, out of this um, very, very engloving or somehow inclusive project, you developed more recently the Terzo Paradiso. The Terzo Paradiso is a fusion between the first and the second uh, paradise. And we have many images of that senior, of that sign, of the Terzo Paradiso. Can you tell us about what prompted the, th the third paradise? All what you see now, it, it is uh, the third paradise sign. The sign of the third paradise is, uh, um, is made with three circles, and, and, and it is the new, the new symbol of infinity. The symbol of infinity, it, it was done with two circles, two rounds, hmm? like an eight. But um, for me, this idea of infinity, it was always based on, on my work, because also the, the mirror painting, they are really represent the infinity. Uh, but but the infinity is, 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 a, is a special side that comes from, uh, from the mathematics. Hmm? Uh, but but it, is, uh, it, is, it is related with the idea of everything, the line is always changing, it's passing from life and death, death and life, death and life, life and death. And so, and, and, and the paradise, the paradise on that idea of infinity is excluding the life. Is, is something that is somewhere else, is outside of the life. It is, it is why I made the third circle in the, in the center, that, that means life. Hmm? So life, it, it becomes the, 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 the point of connection of what is before and what is after. In this, in this case, in this case uh, of the third paradise, in order to give meaning, the meaning of the third paradise, we have to, to think that we have two paradises that come before. One paradise, it, it is the one when humanity was totally included in, in, in the nature, totally included in the nature. The second paradise starts when humanity starts to, 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 to escape the nature, to, to take distance from the nature. And we organized, uh, and, and humanity started to organize the artificial paradise. The first is the, the natural paradise, the second is the artificial paradise. And now we are at a, 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 a very advanced point of this second paradise. We, 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 have, we, live, we live more and more in the artificial life. Hmm? And now the third paradise should be the connection between the first and the second. That means nature and artifact. This is the idea, because we have to, to, to go ahead making um, uh, science and technology uh, more, more, uh, more advanced and more profound 
and more efficient. But at the same time, we have to, to, to think that nature has to be saved. Because if we, if we don't save the nature, if, we, if humanity dies in extreme consideration, the, the science dies. <laughs> because I want science to, to go ahead. I love science. I love technology. I need humanity. I need people that make, even, even if I, I don't, I don't uh, I, I'm not humanistic, but I am precisely projected in, in the idea of technology and, and science, in order to protect it, I need humanity. No? And humanity needs the world, need nature. So we have, in the third paradise, we have to, to connect the nature and, and uh, the, the artifact. And that connection leads us to the third project, the main project uh, we wanted you to ask today about, which is the Rebirth Day. Uh, and there are many, many connections, obviously, uh, to the DLD art projects. On the one hand, I was mentioning the panel you are going to see later tonight, the 89 plus panel, which we curate with Simon Castets, about this new generation of artists. And that is a generation of artists, of course, of the same generation as the students, uh, you know, the young artists who work in your Cita dell'Arte projects, the emerging artists. And there was another link why it's really our dream that you can be here at DLD today because it's really this connection to patterns that connect and to the digital with your rebirth day. Because when we started to discuss with Steffi um, earlier, actually, sort of in autumn, about this whole idea of patterns that connect, um, it somehow resonated a lot with your rebirth day, the idea actually of a coming together, your idea of creating a global artwork. And what seemed particularly interesting is Michelangelo's desire not to actually connect a project to the digital world. So, you know, for many of you, there might be this possibility to participate, to get involved. Michelangelo wants to work with companies. He wants to work with, you know, um, uh, many, many different layers in the digital field to make this rebirth day a really global phenomenon. He was telling me earlier today that it could almost become, a, you know, an annual ritual, a bit like we have Christmas. We could have every year this rebirth day. So, Michelangelo, to cut the long story short, what triggered the rebirth day? Can you tell us uh, about this epiphany? You, you, yeah, you, you remember we, we, we have been talking together about the, the idea of rebirth day um, one year ago huh? yeah. together at the serpentine and um, I said why now this is the year of the end of the world because the 21 of December is the uh, Maya Maya is not you but it's the, the Maya the, decided no that it was the legend the legend that Maya should uh, announce the, at the end of the world I said what a, what a better publicity huh? To, um, uh, 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 of, of that idea of the end of the world in order to, to, to propose, to give a lot of, of, of meaning to rebirth. Uh, so the 21 of December, we decided it, it, we, it, it, uh, it should be the rebirth day, the, uh, the, the day of the renaissance of, 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 uh, of, of our life uh, and society. So the idea of rebirth day it, it, it was transformed in, the, in, a, in a project um, that was involving all the world as a new celebration. Because the 21 of, the, of December also, it was celebrated in, in, the, in the antique, antique time uh, as the, uh, uh, the solstice of the, of the winter in, in, the, in, the, in the north of the, of, the, of, the, of the sphere and in the south of the, of the earth it was the, the summer solstice. And it, and it is the moment of passage. And so I thought, okay, we make a new, a new celebration that is re retaking the old one and we, and we, go, and we, and we go ahead with, with the project that uh, um, asked everybody to participate. And we received many, 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 many uh, ideas, many uh, propositions of participations. And finally, the celebration uh, uh, became real. And now, and now we, we, we can see in, in the next, uh, next days, we start to put together all this on, 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 online. Um, uh, rebirthday.org uh, and also so face on Facebook. We put all, all everything in, in, in evidence of what was uh, what happened in, 
in that day, but not only in the day, the preparation of the day and what, what, what is consequent to these days. That it's a kind of the biggest artwork in the world that is bringing everybody inside. And every year we will have again and again the celebration. So it will be the first holiday day uh, of, 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 the, uh, of the Christmas days, Christmas uh, uh, is not the Christmas time. Is not a religious, but it's a social conception uh, because it's not the, the birth like like uh, like um, for, for example uh, Christmas can be the, the, the celebration of, of the la naissance, the, the birth, but it is the rebirth. It, it is a social conception, and and the, and this uh, this sign. Is, it's, it's, it takes the place, for example, is a very is a social sign. Everybody can interpret it. It can it can start from the, from that sign and also do something else, make, make drink and make and make big festa, make music. They can do all, all what they want, but with the idea that everybody from that moment is engaged on a personal uh, activity, uh, even small but with putting freedom and, and, and responsibility into the, act, in the action of everyday life. And so every year we, we, we will see uh, the 21 of, of, uh, of December, we will see what, was, what, was, what is, was going on during the year. And it will be a way also to verify which, which, what is the point of the society, not only of the art, but the society, what is going on? We are going in, in, in a negative or positive di direction. Uh, so it is why Cita dell'Arte now is putting together a lot of people that uh, make research in all different fields. Huh? So we, we have a big job to do. Huh? But every year we will give the response to what's going on. And we will make, in the same time, we enjoy everybody together of the Renaissance and, and a re rebirth day. So I hope you can all join Michelangelo in making this the biggest artwork in the world. Thank you so very, very much, Michelangelo. Molto grazie. And when Michelangelo was mentioning Citta dell'Arte, this idea of an institution uh, which is actually about production, about publications, about the social and also the environmental, that leads us right away to Maya Hoffman and Maya to your vision of the Luma Foundation, which you founded in 2004 um, in Zurich. And I wanted to ask you first to maybe tell us a little bit about the uh, Epiphany, which led to the you know, foundation of the Luma Foundation, and if you can tell us a bit about where the project stands now. Thank you, Hans Ulrich. Um, I was here already a few years ago presenting you a project which uh, actually is still on but not solved. I would like today to start with the, um, I think this will work like this. What is the first slide? Yeah. I would like today to start with a few projects that we've been, um, we've been producing so that you can see that it has actually a real, like a, with, a, a real, with an arrow, we really reach out from the past towards the future. And this has also a quality of school actually because it's including older masters, younger people, generations, and we also invite uh, young people. Um, the Temple del Postino, which was produced uh, in 2007 by Manchester and taken over by uh, Arles, uh, by Basel first, and uh, all the artists agreed to give the archive to the Luma Foundation, which was really one of the best and happiest uh, day in my life. I wanted to show you a few images. I hope they don't look like what I see here because they they are really great. Is this okay? Yeah. A few images. This was a show that was happening on the stage, so the public, the audience, did not have to walk around like usual uh, shows in uh, museums. And it was a, a show where a whole generation uh, worked together 
uh, from Philippe Pareno, Hans Ulrich was uh, and then Rekriti Rabanier. This is an Olafur Eliasson piece. This is a, a piece I really do not see it, but I know it's Andre Sala. And here Rekriti Rabanier. So as you see, it's really staged. We then I see the other side of this arc. I see uh, in Arles what happened this summer. I'm leaving this uh, uh, show that we call To the Moon via the Beach, where Philippe Pareno and uh, Liam Gillick uh, had this incredible idea, and it was uh, uh, to invite in the big arena um, a list of 20 artists. You just saw it. I think I'm, I have to, to hurry, so I will not go through it. We, we brought, uh, this is a piece by Rick Reed again, we brought sand into the arena. It was a whole work together. And we also, here you have a piece by um, some old artists mixed with young artists. This you might have seen in Castle. And in the end, a bonfire. All the artists working in the group, this, they are actually special pieces, but they were agreeing to do it together. And this is why I did not repeat all the names, because I want you to have this impression that everybody really was working together. Um, the next project we made was a trial to bring the Kamak, so now I'm getting closer geographically to Al, to bring the Kamak back into the city and to have, to entitle the people who were who were a part of it. This is a part uh, to, to recognize themselves and have an identity which really, really uh, um, made them proud. So it, would, it was needed to put Arles on the map, on the international map. We have um, an application for this. We have things that I want to come back just a little later, but this was opening day. It was installed in what we call the Grande Halle, which is a bed with a concert and an opening event. It attracted many people. These are big images that Doug Aitken made it, what he called it, liquid uh, cinematography. And uh, it was the first time that we were able to use this big hall for a presentation. Um, yeah, this was uh, really what I try, is to bring back the spirit of the Kamag into the town, and I hope we will succeed for this. In parallel, we have been working uh, on the architecture. So four years ago, we made a trial and um, actually um, human, uh, not human heritage, yeah, human heritage and uh, archeology span prevented the project to get filed. This is the city of Arles, very briefly, and very small. Don't, can we have it full, in the full screen? Nicer. No? Okay. City of um, Arles. Hmm. And you, you see the Roman, uh, you see the Roman uh, theater on the side, which in, my, in the slide I gave was, uh, in, was in his hall. Maybe you can still see part of it on this slide. Um, and as you see, a big, big place where we want to build our project. The project is consisting of old um, and new buildings. These are the old buildings. This is the way it's looking now. It's, uh, this is the way it was looking before it closed in the 70s. This is not, of course, much earlier. Huh? And then, actually, this is when it was blooming at the end of the last century. So a huge place, one of the biggest places in the south of France, and this is why I think it is also so difficult to produce a work. We are interested in implementing a school there. We are also implement, uh, interested in uh, um, implementing production. We want to produce exhibitions in the sense than the one we produced before. Van Gogh has been painting it. You see in the, in the end, in the background, you see that it was really working at the time. You see the Alice Khan, you see the mix of the, of the countryside with the industrial. And we have two partners who decided to come with us. I'm not going to speak about the public partners tonight, but only about 
uh, one private partner, which is a, a publisher. It's a, um, a publishing house called Actisuit, and we are good friends. They are in the blue. The, the blue on the other side is a decision of the Ministry of Culture who wants to create a national school for photography. Now you may know, and these other buildings are the buildings which are programmed by the foundation, together with the core group of consultants that I'm going to, to speak about in a minute. So the old is really used as mostly as exhibition sites. You have the Grand Halle and the, and then we also decided since years to create a new building, and this new building is um, meant to attract more people to Arles and meant to become really a place where work can be done. It should be really very, uh, um, very dense. And I'm going to show you some pictures first. So the whole place we are programming is huge, actually. Don't ask me how many hectares, because uh, it's more the buildings than the, the site. And in between, we also are going to plant a garden. And this garden is um, also decided by us. And it's going to be a fantastic place to hang for the people who are around and also meant as a campus. In the north, oh, we, there is also another school. It's a school for infography and a school for, for animation. Now, this is the way the buildings are going to look. So refurbishment will be minimal on the big building, but uh, the, the climate will be uh, multiplied by, by uh, really a great, great deal. Uh, this also, this is more or less a few images which, were, which could be bigger, but they are all small now. I hope you can see it. This um, are a few images of the site. And now to the new uh, part, which has been uh, also like the old center, the new part which has been also uh, thought by the group of consultants and which has been thought by Frank Gehry, partner. Am I still good? Um, this is a sketch called the Roman plan. These images uh, cannot be really published uh, now we have to wait until March, so this is a work in progress. I decided to share them with you, and I know it's going to finish on internet, but it's really to be understood like a work in progress and should not be published. I hope we can cut them out again once it's not live stream and maybe replace them by the face of Hans Ulrich or something like this. <laughs> so as you see, this tower has got um, uh, the circle around, which is glazed. It is now stopping. I hope I can just go further, yeah. It is composed of places you may, may, may have seen it in the socle, what we call the socle, in the, ba in the basement. Uh, white cube places, which then there will, will be like museum spaces, huh? and there is over 3,500 altogether. The whole building is bigger, but I'm not going to, to, to complete the, this much more. This happens in parallel and at the same time then we produce show. The programmation is much more important. And also the program we, we, we want to see. I just want to go a little through, through it. Um, so exhibition in the, floor, in the ground floors, archive. Then in the center, sent in the drum, it's going to be very, very alive a little. And we have some meeting rooms, but the meeting rooms are meant for schools. Then you see some other places where you can uh, meet, but more for students. There will be a place which is a library which will be open to public, but also a library uh, where we can uh, program some other, other programs. And then we have offices. Now these offices are not dead offices, they are just production offices of shows that can, will be traveling around the world actually, because we want to produce shows, so our, our first aim is the show, is the production of traveling exhibitions. Of course, also the production of art, literature, and we really are quite ambitious, but I believe in Renaissance too. Uh, Michelangelo, I really do believe in Renaissance, so I think uh, that we can achieve this if we have the right people coming. I hope you are coming to visit us there, yeah? Now briefly, this is the way it's going to look in the city. So, 
you see it's going to transform the whole. These are models, are pictures of the model. There are no renderings. Even the other, the, the, the turning tower I showed you was a model picture. And here, this is the way it looks in R, so the old and the new can really work. You see the Rhone River, which is really very, very dear to me because it's, it's taking us to the island and to the Kaman. And this is where the birds, which are the second big love uh, of my life, I won't tell you what the first, first is, are just going to, uh, we are going to try and include them in the program because I want to introduce also some scientific work in our think. I can now not talk about the calendar or anything, and I think we are finished here. Hans Ulrich, voila, this is the people we are working with. Can you read it? This would be nice to, to film. Institution, things, we don't have our own website. Every production has a small website. Uh, I, am, don't, I didn't create my website actually on purpose. I prefer to have separate website and that we can upgrade uh, permanently. I want things to come new. This is why I'm here today. I want things to pop up out of nowhere, like little viruses and so, yeah. And maybe one question, Maya, one last question about ecology, because it's so interesting. Michelangelo talks about Chita de Latte recognizing the ecological problem as the main cause of the global crisis, and there's a very strong ecological aspect in, uh, in your project. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about this, and the whole connection to the Kamak and yeah, I know you came to visit once. The ecology is been, it's something that I'm administrating, uh, um, actually it's a, a, a family foundation, uh, for years now, and I'm really trying to protect the nature at the same time Then I make statements, and I think that to put t uh, ecological statements, so there are two things. I think that to put the ecology together with the artist is going to definitely change something in the way we look at it. And I also, protect uh, agriculture when it's traditional, and I do some uh, um, ec um, organic, um, organic uh, restoration, organic things. These are the buffer zones for the reserve. The reserves in the Kamad are magnificent, and we already have a whole network of people we work with, with this tiny little Fondation Tour du Valat that you can see, uh, that you can see on the screen. Uh, I'm really uh, looking forward also with the International MABA Foundation to be able to offer them a space and in this campus and I think we can do a really brilliant things. But we are already doing it anyway. <laughs> Maya, thank well, you so very, very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you all.